Welcome back. We're in Orgrimmar. So I, I um, last episode I think I logged out over in the Eastern Kingdoms, and I went ahead and just hearthed to Orgrimmar so we get some rested experience. And we're going to go back here anyway for some questing, so I thought that made the most sense. Um, I'm kind of looking for... I, I want to stock up before we go Executioner's Cleaver. What is this? Chained axe. It's a pretty nice axe. Not better than what we have, I think. Um, I wanted to get a few more fish oil before we go. Uh, I think that'd be useful. And while we're here, I want to also queue up for Alterac Valley in case we can get in. Um, I was like, doing some searching for some gear just before this started fish oil. Wow, some of this is pretty expensive, but we'll take... Uh, just get a full stack. Ooh, okay. Um... Okay, uh, um, um, lesser, nether, I need two of these, small, radiant, I need one of these, you'll see what I'm doing in just a moment, aquamarine, I need one of these, and then armor, male, uh, 47 feet, usable, uh, 12 agility, 12 stamina, 12 agility, 12 stamina, I want to buy this, uh, grabbing mats from mailbox, uh, let's see, so what I want to get is movement speed on boots, but these boots are not my favorite, 9 strength and 8 spirit, they're a little outdated, no, I mean, it could be worse, let's just open all this, so what I think I need is oh, oh, there, 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 cool. All right, let's do a trade. I think those are the mats, and then let's do a trade. Let's put this down here. Let's do a one gold tip, minor speed, awesome. So thank you. Uh, all you want. Thank you. All right, so we're now going to go from our current boots, which are, um, what do we have? 9 strength, 8 spirit, 164 armor, to 12 agility, 12 stamina, 211 armor, and increased movement speed. It's going to be hard to see the movement speed difference, but if you can imagine, like, watch me walking right now, and then I'm going to switch on to these boots, you can sort of see my step picks up by, it's an 8% movement speed increase. It's pretty significant, switch back, switch back. Um, so I'm pretty psyched about that. Now, a couple other things we're going to do maybe while we're here for fun. Um, let's go queue up for Alterac Valley. We're kind of low. I mean, Alterac Valley goes up to 60, so we're going to get, like, smushed by a lot of, like, level 60 raid-geared people if we even get in. The queues have been really long for the Horde recently, like, I think upwards of two hours, which is unfortunate, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, I like these boots. They're definitely... Um, a solid upgrade for us. That's pretty nice. And then we got our fish oil here, which is nice. We'll probably just vendor off this last one just to save some space. Uh, the plan today is to do a little bit of a tour of Orgrimmar. a few things I want to do. I'm going to check out the Battlemaster up here uh, to queue up. I'm going to check out the War Effort, which is uh, a part of the Ankarash Gates opening. Uh, I'll explain a bit more about that in a moment. And Everything's recording, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what am I doing? There's Panda Cub. All right, I think... I'll try to War Master. I'd like to join the battleground. First available, of course. What is my queue time? One hour and 54 minutes. I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> we might get lucky. We might get lucky. It's really early in the morning. I think it makes it worse. Um, what I mean by I don't know if I'll make it is I don't know if I'll be playing for two more hours and then more time to be able to actually enjoy some Alteric Valley, but I love to get in there and get through at least one of them. Horde tend to win, so that would be a little bit of an experience boost for us with some quests done, hopefully. Be kind of nice. Um, I guess come to think about it, I think the quests I need are outside of Alteric Valley itself, so I'm probably going to go over there. Um, how do I want to do this? Yeah, I'll probably get a mage to portal me to Undercity, 
so we can go grab the quick fly to Alterac Valley or um, Terran Mill, and then we can grab our quest from out there. We actually have one to turn in, which is this one, in defense of Alter of Frostwolf. Um, what is this? Oh, commendation segments. Okay, so the war effort. Um, it started, I guess it would have been three Tuesdays ago. So today is August 15th. So it would have started um, three Tuesdays back. It's almost like, it's like two and a half weeks, a little more than two and a half weeks. And the war effort, you have to turn in something like two million supplies on the Horde side and three million on the Alliance side. When all those are turned in, all the supplies will be transported to the gates or to Silithus. It uh, takes five, you know, it's like it takes five days for the NPCs to do that. And then the gong outside of AQ can be rung by anyone that's completed the Scarab Lord quest. And then AQ will open up and a 10 hour war will begin, which is kind of a fun event. Um, so we can check the horde progress by this guy's Warlord Gorchuk and um, some chit chat here. But everything's done. Um, oh, um. I guess we can't even see the updates anymore. Like how much of each thing do we need? Because they're actually they are done. If you go to the alliance guy, you can still see it's like what is the war effort and then how many of these things do we need? And for example, if we go to herbs, they are done with strangle kelp, done with purple lotus, done with Arthas Tears. If we go to leather, I think they still need some leather. Yeah, they need about, oh man, they're getting down to 1,300 light leather, and ooh, it's a decent amount of medium leather still, and they still need like 3,500 medium leather. And then if we go to bandages, the only thing they needed left was 2,500 linen bandages. They're so close. <laughs> and what that ends up looking like is as you fill this up, like these things, like you see these big stockpiles over here, it's kind of cool, they just stack and stack and stack. Over here we've got the, uh, the food people, baked salmon, spotted yellowtail, lean wolf steaks. Um, this is the the bars over here, tin bar, mithril, copper for the horde. I think this is bandages, oh, uh, fire bloom, purple lotus, peace bloom, and these are wool bandages, mage weave, from thought. It's kind of fun, a few more things over here, some leather supplies. But things are, um, quite well stocked at this point. Um, take a little screenshot of this. And I contributed a lot of my druid. I probably contributed about um, a thousand pieces of fire bloom, which is like, oh man, that's it was like fifty stacks of fire bloom. Fire bloom sells for twenty to sixty gold per stack, so I could have made a lot of money off that. But I'm pretty good on gold, so I don't really care. It's more fun to kind of participate. I turned in a lot of uh, a wool, a lot of peace bloom, a lot of copper. Those are the things I tended to work on. Probably several thousand total pieces on my own. Um, now I need a. Um, who's this? Can I get a portal to Undercity, please? I will tip. Alright, Whisper has been sent. Let's see what happens. I think this Hell Yeah Brother might be a farming guild, like, like a bot guild. Look at his name. Disk Digqui. Um, non pronounceable name. I'm I'm a bully. I can't help it. It's like the one thing I actually am like kind of a stickler on. Um, uh, can I get a portal to UC? I'll tip. And then. Move that. All right. Thank you. Let's get that one gold trade. I'm so lazy. It's so much faster portaling than it is to uh, fly, or yeah, to zeppelin over. All right. Let me send a quick thank you. Uh, thank you. Perfect. We're still queued up. We've been in it five minutes. <laughs> Two hours to go. Still pretty much. Alright, so once we're here, the plan from this point is I want to go down to Valtrek Valley turn-in point where we can um, 
turn in this quest and grab whatever other quests are outside of the instance, just in case we do get into the instance soon. And then I'm going to hearth back to Orgrimmar fly to Thunder Bluff, because I want to check out the Dark Moon Fair, which we haven't checked out yet on this guy. Um, there's a buff we can get there, which would be kind of nice, and that's mainly why I want to go. Um, we'll take a peek at it and see what's going on there. I've got some minerals I should uh, smell tough, but I'm not in a hurry to do that, really. I will vend her off a couple things real fast. Let's get rid of that and that. I clean up my bags between episodes, so we had a lot of stuff from killing those... Uh, Remember. Like the uh, the bear and all that. I'm looking for group. Let's get in looking for groups in case something comes up. I was checking earlier on my sh on my uh, druid. I mean, it's like three thirty in the morning, right, on server time. But I was checking earlier on my shaman on my druid, sorry, and I didn't see any anyone looking for groups of any groups that were relevant to us. I was trying to keep an eye out for. Hmm. Um. Uh, Sunken Temple especially, but also even Oldman, even though we're a little high level, Maraudin, and possibly Zulfarak, because I think we have some quests there still, that are chain quests that I would like to do. Um, yeah, so we have quite a few quests I'd like to get done, but I don't know if we're going to be doing them. Really, Sunken Temple is the one I really would like to do at this point. This would be an awesome one. Uh, we get a nice trinket that actually is... Well, it's not amazing, but it's better than what we have, since we have a lot of trinkets that are on cooldowns. Jamal and the Prophet, mm, it's okay. But really, it's just the voodoo I want to do, because I want to get this enamored water spirit, which is so nice. I see someone looking for BRD. Um, could possibly run BRD. I don't have any quests for it, unfortunately. But yeah, I figured I'd get in the looking for group channel and see what we can find. Yeah, I'm excited. It's the war effort being done. It'll probably finish in the next this morning. I think a lot of people are working on it. And if it finishes early Saturday, I think the way it works is that it takes five days for the supplies to be delivered. So Saturday, that'd be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. But then Thursday, as soon as it's delivered, someone can ring the gong, which presumably will happen pretty much instantly. And then once it's rung, there's a 10 hour war that occurs in Silithus and a few other zones. And that war, um, once that's done, I think then you can enter AQ-40 and AQ-20. I think it takes the 10 hours. As I saw a report that said someone was saying that as soon as the gong was rung, you could go in and raid. Not at the end of the 10-hour war, but I don't think that's accurate. I just don't remember. Um, last time I did this was, truthfully, was um, in Vanilla Well, which was... You know, a long time ago, obviously. Uh, how's our membership doing? Good, okay. Um, yeah, so we, got a, we have the Nixia buff. What I'd like to get is probably the the Dark Moon Fairy. There's lots of different buffs, and you get like 10% agility, 10% strength, all these things. But I think most of those work off of base stats, but there's one that's 10% damage, and that one is just purely... It takes your final damage. So, like, if you were gonna hit someone for 100 damage, you'd hit them for 110. It's a 10% damage boost, um, just flat out. Uh, I think I need to go this way. Actually, I'm messing up a bit here. So, there's a pretty nice argument to be made that the 10% damage is the best one because it's a it's a final damage modifier. Is I guess what I would call it. Whereas 10% 10, 10 strength, 10% agility, I think, is just off your base stats. So. If my base stats are, let's say, for example here, it looks like agility is 51, it'd be essentially plus 5 agility, which isn't bad. I mean, it's better than nothing, but 5 agility is not going to give me a bonus 9 DPS, whereas the 10% damage is going to effectively be like a 9 DPS increase, since I have 91.6 uh, DPS. Oh, this is the alliance. What am I doing? Oh, no. I am so dumb. I was like, oh yeah, this is where I need to be. I'm gonna die and there's my Nixia buff on me so mad. This is the horrid entrance over here, I'm pretty sure. All of a sudden I was like, why are there no quests? I was like literally looking, I was like, where are the quests? I don't see any quests. So like, usually there's quests. Um Usually there's quests here or something. And I was like, that's weird, maybe I'm too low level after all. And then no. No, I'm just stupid. 
I was running the wrong way. Nice. My guildy got robe of volatile power. That's why I'm, uh... That's why it's, like, linked suddenly. Uh, that's exciting. It's a really nice mage uh, chest piece. So, 2% spell crit, 23 spell damage, and some stats. I think the crit and spell damage are the, the real, like, the, the crit especially are the really nice things about it. Okay, so we're here at the Alterac Mountains uh, in the Alterac Valley entrance, and we got one quest to turn in Strength in defense of Frostwolf. That's 6600 experience for that, it's pretty nice. Proving Grounds, travel to the Wildpaw Cavern located southeast of the main base in Alteric Valley and find the banner. I don't think we can do that quest solo, I think we're gonna need some help. I might be able to solo it. Mm -hmm. For great honor, okay, we don't really want that. Uh, invaders of Alteric, this is just if we win, we could turn this quest in. It's a pretty nice one. I don't. I might as well grab Strength. it now. I don't think it really matters. We can pick it up after. Enter Al Alteric Valley and defeat the Dwarven General Vandar Stormpike. This is what I was looking for. This is one that'd be nice to pick up. Um, I think there might be another quest or two inside here. It'll be a little annoying because even if we do complete these, we're gonna have to like come back out here. This is one I'd really like to get. Um, started because as you get new higher reputation with Frostwolf uh what is it called uh where is it hold on reputation I'm forgetting I don't even have any reputation yet with it. I think it's called Frostwolf Militia is the reputation. As you get higher reputation this upgrades and the final one is actually not awful to where like if we got it fast enough we're not gonna get it anytime soon. Towers and bunkers, capture an enemy tower. We might be able to do that one. Capture Assaulted Graveyard, we might be able to get that one. Capture Mine, I don't think there's any chance we're going to finish that one this time. So I'm just going to grab it just in case, but we may end up throwing away some of these. Especially if there's the Battleground Instance Portal, it's a cool red color. But I think that's everything I needed out here. I just wanted to grab the quest in case we get in early somehow. And in the meantime, we're going back to Orgrimmar. And we turned in one quest, that's nice. Frostwolf Clan. That's their reputation. Is it not showing up here? Why is it not? Oh, it's Horde Forces. Okay, it's up here. I was looking down in other. I thought it'd be down here, but it's oh, up in Horde Forces. Okay. And this is a quest. Speak with Archdruid Hamul, Rune Totem, Rune Totem, and Thunderbluff. This has been here for a while. We're going to go to Thunderbluff now, actually. Um, so I might as well grab that quest. Where is that? Where is... I'm full on quests actually, so I might end up dumping, um... Capture a mine, because I'm not going to be capturing a mine. There's a NPC I'm looking for around here that has a quest for me. I just saw him in front of the bank earlier. I think he patrols through here. It's the guy that tells you to go to the Dark Moon Fair. I don't think we've been there yet on this guy, and I'm pretty sure I saw him running around. Maybe I'm way off on this. I don't know what his name is, though. Um, if I did, I could do a target macro. There's a general goods vendor. Does not help us? I'm gonna... I feel like I'm on like a wild goose chase is what I would call it. 45 heals looking for group. I wish my one-handed weapon was a little bit better. So my only problem right now is that my... Oh, my dagger is not too bad. It's at 225. Okay, I thought it was worse than that. It's not awful. I could probably tank with it on like something like Zulfarok maybe. Or Oldman. I don't think I'd tank a higher level. This is who I was looking for, but maybe he doesn't have anything for me. Maybe this isn't who I was looking for, actually. This is the war caller. Is there a guy? Okay. May your blades never die. Um, let me just check a little bit further down here. I don't think the NPC travels as far. No. Okay, I don't think so. Um, 
I think it's called Dark Moon Fair. I'm gonna look it up real fast because I wanna kind of like to grab the quest. Uh, classic. Wowhead, thank you very much. Google autocomplete. And what I'm looking for is a quest called. I think it's Dark Moon. Fair? Where is the quest guy? I, I'm not crazy, I don't think. Um, I don't know, these quests, okay. The Dark Moon Fair. Started, okay. That's what I'm looking for. Where is he? I, I swear he was like right here earlier. Start is Krubin Darkblade. Okay. Krub. There he is. Okay, where are you? <laughs> like, there he is. Okay. I knew he was around here somewhere. This is the guy I was looking for. I know he patrolled, but I didn't realize he patrolled up like this path here. Okay. Uh, deliver free ticket voucher to Galvis Grimgate, located inside the Dark Moon Fair Carnival. Okay. Go forth to victory. Let's do it. Yeah, so we're 20 minutes in this episode. We've done very, very little, but we'll progress from here. We'll, we'll get some stuff done. I might hold on to Dark Moon Fair supplies. Um, it might be nice to get Dark Moon Fair tickets, because I think there's a decent reward or two for Shaman. Like, there's a couple, there's at least one trinket that I think would be nice for us. Um, might be more than that. Let me check the world buffs real quick. Okay, none of the world buffs are going to reset. So, um, there's an add-on called Nova World Buffs that I use that will track world buff timers. And so, like you can see on the screen there, Rend and Ixian Afarian, um, none of them are going to reset for at least half an hour. So I... I'm not going to wait around for it, you know? Like, I picked up that Anixia buff because I saw that it was going to be dropped the other day, like, two episodes back, I think, in between episodes. I, uh, was like, oh, it's going to drop, so I'll just, like, log on to this guy and grab the buff, which is what I did, which was nice. Um, but I don't usually go out of my way, especially on this guy, to get the buffs. So on my druid, if I'm playing that day and I can see the buffs are coming soon, I'll try to time it out so I can grab them. But I don't, um, I'm not like a hardcore world buffer. Like, I think that's one of the things that's the saddest about Classic. Not even saddest, but like one of the biggest changes in Classic relative to Vanilla is that in Vanilla, I mean, frankly, I raided through, we cleared all of Multicore, Anixia, AQ20, um, Zulgarum, Blackwing Lair, everything in AQ40 except for Oro, the optional worm boss. And I think we killed nine bosses in Nax Rama. So we cleared, I think, two full wings. No, no. We cleared one wing, and then the other three wings, we cleared, like, two, one to three bosses in each wing. Um, so we got about nine bosses down, which is, like... Honestly, that's incredibly impressive for Vanilla Well. Like, getting nine bosses in next Ramas before Burning Crusade launches was almost unheard of. Like, my gear and my guild's gear was extremely good for uh, Vanilla. We only had one of the guild in the server horde side, I think, that cleared any Nax bosses. It was actually a guild called Hell. Um, we were Sad Face was the name of our guild. And my point being is we did all that, and we didn't use world buffs. Like, we, we occasionally would um, get world buffs, but I don't think we ever timed them out to get them in the way that is commonplace on classic servers. There's nothing wrong with that, but it, it does make content much easier. I mean, it's really hard to explain how good the Anixia buff is, but 140 attack power and 5% melee crit, I mean, that's multiple pieces of gear for a raid geared shaman. Like, you're not going to get like 5% crit, you might need to have, honestly, you might need five to five pieces of gear to get 5% spell crit or melee crit, 10% spell crit. Like that's basically all the spell crit you might have on your gear. Um, I mean, maybe that's not true. Maybe it's a little bit exa exaggerating, but it's, it's quite a bit. I mean, just a ton and 140 attack power. Like that's a ton. And by the time you, so you throw that on, you throw on the Rend buff, which is a 15% increased attack speed, plus some stamina. You throw on Hakar, which is like plus 15% all stats or something, plus 10% all stats. 
Song Flowers, another 5 or 10% crit, plus 15 all stats. And there's like the Dire Maul buffs that are increased spell crit, stamina, attack power. Um, and then Dark Moon Fair buff is another 10% damage. But by the time you put all that on there, like, truthfully, you might be doubling your DPS. I mean, it's really insane how much of a difference it makes for DPS or for healers or tanks. It's just really insane. You throw on that, cons like, stacking consumables, which was done in vanilla, but not as heavily as it is here. By the time you put on all your consumables and all that, I mean, you really are easily doubling your output in healing, DPSing, tanking, whatever. Um, while we're here, I just grabbed that quest that was for... Rune Totem? Elder Rise, yeah. The Hemuel Rune Totem quest. Let's go over here... Um, and we'll grab, we'll complete this quest. I think this quest that he gives us will send us to Ungoro, which I don't really care about going to right now, but it's probably where we'll end up at some point. I do li I like Ungoro personally. It'll probably be a little bit messier with stuff, um, actually no, it's probably fine now. Now that most of the stuff in Silithus is done, I don't think it matters as much. But let's go turn this quest anyway. We might grab the follow-up, and I'll just hold on to it. Okay, let's see this. Oh. Assisting our true rune totem. Greetings, shaman. There's much to do. Hope this will not scare you off. Okay. 470 experience. Bring 20 on Goro soil samples. Um. Okay. We shall you know, honestly, let me check something. I might go check the auction house, because sometimes on Goro... Is it just... It's just on Goro soil. I think sometimes it's just available on the auction house, and if it's not too expensive, I might just buy some. Um, just to get an easy quest done. It sounds kind of nice. Oh, I want to show you later, not this episode, but a future episode, I want to show you how you can get a huge boost in experience from uh, Zolgarub by s turning in like a repeatable quest that's outside of the instance. It's actually kind of insane. Um, let's do this. Is it Ungoro soil? Okay. So 20 of them, is, it's a little expensive, right? Would I buy 20 just to get the quest done? Would I spend 10 gold on this? I might do that. It's not really that efficient, but it'd kind of be nice to like complete the quest. Because I'm not sure I'm going to go back and pick up the quest. I'm worried I'm going to forget about it because it's kind of out of the way. I might do this. It's a little it's a little wasteful. Um, we will go to Ungoro anyway eventually, but this gives us like one quest down off the to-do list, which is kind of fun, kind of nice. Every now and then I have these episodes, I feel like, where I kind of just do, I don't know, it's almost like housekeeping, where I feel like I run around and like I upgrade my gear a bit, I go turn in a few quests, I set myself up for some future quests, that kind of stuff. Um, and this feels like it's going to be one of those housekeeping episodes where I'm just not getting a lot done, ultimately, but it still feels productive in its own way. And I guess it's kind of how classic is sometimes like especially if you're not really like i'm not a min maxer for this guy at all like i'm clearly just kind of running around doing whatever i feel like doing that day um whatever i is convenient maybe in some cases but i'm not necessarily doing what's the most efficient did i okay i was like did i forget to grab this out of the mailbox i'm just so mad i have to run back i i like forgot that i didn't forget to get it at the mailbox all right Geed? Geed? How do you pronounce his name? G-H-E-D-E. -E. Uh, at ease, private, if you're here to unload soil from Ungoro, outstanding then. Otherwise disappear. <laughs> oh, that's right, Private Supa, don't make any effort to help me unload the soil up onto the piles. If the Great Spirits had wanted it done, they would have miracled it up there. Now, wouldn't they? This guy's very snarky. Archdruid Rune Totem wants to speak with you again. Before his next task, you find that a journeyman's understanding of herbalism would be helpful? Great. If you don't know it, they'll still find a use for you. Well, we got back 1 gold, 45 silver, so we really spent, like, what I spent almost 10 gold. I really spent, um, 
little more like eight and a half. It's not too bad. All right, what is this herbalism thing? Oh, Mara Grain Research. Best. Take the seed voucher to Bashana Rune Totem and Thunder Bluff. Okay. Tharlender seeds in the soil of Mongoro. These seeds have blossomed into an array of random potent herbs. One result is Mara Grain, a mysterious herb we know little about. Okay. Take this voucher over to my daughter Bashana. Okay. And she'll give you some of the seeds so you may assist us. We. I remember this quest. Okay, we need like the blood petal, blood petal sprouts. I think to do this quest. I don't really think it needs herbalism what at all. You here? Okay, yes, this voucher is good for twenty packets of seeds. If you run out of seeds, I do have more that I'm able to sell you. The seeds are quite costly. Okay, this way the Siren Circle asks that those who are assisting us help out by offsetting some of the cost. Okay, so this pouch we need. Um, Angoro sample, soil samples. Okay, okay. Ancestors okay, so actually, this might not be so bad. We just need Angoro soil, so I might just buy another set of Angoro soil while we're running around the rest of the world, and we can keep using this quest. The reason why I might do that is because this is a. Um, I think it's a 10 minute cooldown. Yeah, 10 minute cooldown is right there, duh. And it, it uh, takes a little while to kind of burn through it. So I might just kind of do that. Um, yeah. While we're running around the rest of the world. And we might get this quest done on our own. Effectively without going to Unguru, which is kind of nice. I'll buy one more stack. I'm spending a lot of gold in this. It's, a little, it's super wasteful, but it's okay. And then I, you know, while I'm here, let's do this actually. Let's go grab those on Goro soil. Any leather workers? Probably not. Sure, open all the same thing. Okay, let's click our little packet. I think it takes like 10 seconds, 5 or 10 seconds. Um, let's get a 10 second cast or 10 minute cooldown. Okay, cultivate packet of seeds and let's see what we get. Morrow grain. I guess, you know, I could have cut out the middleman. Now that I think about this, this is I'm gonna check the auction house for Morrow Green. We need uh, 10 of it. And Morrow Green. Uh, it would have been cheaper just to buy 10 Morrow Green. That's a little dumb. <laughs> I should have just bought the 10 Morrow Green. I would have been done with this. Um, that's okay. We will just finish cultivating it. Sometimes you get some other kind of nice things, frankly, out of this that are like you can get potions or food. So we'll just burn through this 10 times, and if we don't finish this, then we'll just buy the Morrow Grain. Yeah, that was a mistake. Push just bought the Morrow Grain. You know, let's smelt up some of this stuff. Um, do I not know how to smelt Thorium yet? I need to go train that, apparently. Who teaches that? Um, I thought there was an expert miner around here. I might need to go talk to a guard. I don't remember exactly where it's at. Oh, this geology place, it's gotta be it. Anyway, I wanna smelt the storium up, I think. And we might get some skill ups off, it's possible. I don't I don't know if you actually do, you might. Also, a correction, last few episodes I was saying that 255 is rich thorium vein. It's actually 275, so we've got, we've got a ways to go before I can get rich thorium veins. What brings you here? No, oh, I'm about to cough. <clears throat> I like drank that water. Kind of like caught me funny. Yeah, we're not gonna get skill ups off the thorium. That's okay. I think I'll smelt it. I, I usually keep it as ore for my druid. I'm gonna mute myself real fast so I can cough. Much better. It was like, it's like a tickle, you know? Okay, but let's. We're almost ready to go to the fair, which is just outside of Thunder Bluff. If you're wondering why we came here in the first place, that's why. Before I get too far, though, I'm going to send over all my... all this stuff to my mineral bank. Make some space. So we'll go down to the fair, get our buff, and then we're going to go... What's the run time we're up to? 17 minutes? Okay. We'll probably go faster than that's going to be ready. 
Uh, let's go get the Dark Moon Fairy buff. Are we gonna miss both these? Yeah, almost for sure. Dang it. Why are they on the same timer? I feel like they're supposed to stagger, where like one's up, one's down. This is kind of awkward. Uh, you can see the fair from here. I think the fair ends in like uh, a day or two. It ends on Sunday, maybe, I think. Uh, so sometime tomorrow or like very early Monday. Um, I usually come over here on my druid. It'll sometimes get buffs, but I don't really use it for much else. There's a couple cool things. It might be worth checking it out. If you're more of a... If you haven't played since, or if you play like a retail, but you haven't played old school WoW ever, you might be surprised at just how empty the fair is. Like it's pretty barren compared to the modern fair that's instanced. Um, the modern fair, I think I spent a whole Let's Play episode on my Warlock just exploring the fair. It's so big. This one shouldn't take that long. All right, this guy will take, what does this guy take? Oh, he'll take some things for fair vouchers, I think, armor kits, etc. So you can get like tickets for turning in stuff to that guy, I believe. And then what's over here? Some vendors. What are you looking for? Oh hey, this guy sells leathers. Dream foil, that's kind of fun. I've never, I haven't looked at the vendors in a while, so I don't remember exactly what they sell. Scrolls, what this guy got for us. Something special. Are any of these any good for us? Not really. They're just standard food. Okay, it's kind of boring. The drink vendor, probably the same Feel thing. It's like the drink equivalent. I don't want to just bring water. Whoa, that's a lot of text. Can I help you? How do you make a profit? It's not always about money. Okay. Dark moon fair info. Yeah, I don't really need to do that. This guy, I think, takes tickets. Oh no, he takes more things to get, to give you tickets. Okay. This is our quest to announce to this. The Dark Moon Fair. Free ticket voucher. Five tickets, 650 experience. Cool. We'll get a flower, a minor Dark Moon prize. Ooh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna turn in for the minor prize. I just wanna see what it is. I don't think I've ever, ever done this quest. It's gonna almost for sure be, be junk. But let's see what we get. Oh wow, that could have been way worse. I mean, it's level 20 stuff, but like... I feel like it's not as bad as I expected. And we're gonna talk to this guy in a moment, uh, Sage. He's the guy that gives the buffs, which are kind of cool. These are more turn-ins for tickets, I think. Yeah. I always forget that we, when we get these things, I should probably hold on to them. Maybe sell them in the auction house. If I don't use them myself. What's the rituals of strength? Dense grinding sound, okay, that makes sense. So most of these people are just people you turn in stuff for, you get Dark Moon Fair tickets. You can turn those tickets in for like bigger rewards. Need assistance? But as for me, I'm gonna talk to this guy. Sage. And you basically answer these questions. And I think if you pick the top one, you always get this 10% damage buff. And you also get a written fortune, which can be kind of silly. Um, Dark Moon Fair fortune. Buttons and picked up. Avoid taking unnecessary gambles. It's not the most exciting one. That's okay. We had 10% damage buff. I'll take it. Look at that. Damage times 110%. So, cool. Uh, let's head back to Orgrimmar. That's all I wanted to do here. That's literally the whole point of what I was doing here. Um, and then we're going to go back to Felwood. Turn in our quest from two episodes ago. The Blood Amber quest. And then we might... I don't know. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do now. Like, I kind of want to go to Ashara. I'm a little bit worried that Felwood's a bit too high level for us. But let's give Felwood a little bit of a shot still. See if we can do... What do we have left here? Speak to Nafian's not difficult. That's just literally going north and talking to him. Um, as long as we don't get ganked by anyone, it's not a complicated quest. But whether we want to do something else or not, I don't know. I, I want to see this Cleansing Felwood. I think it's a follow-up to this. That I know there's a follow-up, and I think we can do it. And that would be nice. I wouldn't mind doing that. Because this will get us to the point where we can start like um, cultivating those flowers that we see. And getting like Songflower buffs or Night Dragon's Breath, other Whipper Root tubers. Things that I wouldn't mind picking up. Um, it's not urgent, but it would be nice to have that. 
Ooh, while we're flying, I will thank all my Patreon supporters. So thank you all for the support, especially Adam H, Luke D, and Chris S. Uh, it's always appreciated, and thank you. Um, I speaking of random support things, I got a, I was reached out to reached out to contacted by a oh, I forget the name of the company. Um, it was over Twitter. Some company reached out to me, and they make like video game peripherals. I think like third party controllers and things like that. And it sounds like they want I, maybe send me some products to review. Like I've done some reviews in this channel for like PC hardware. Um, most of that, some of that I did. I think the light bar is the only thing that was sponsored. There's another one. I have a microphone that I haven't gotten to yet that was given to me that I uh, as a review sample that I haven't finished to review for. But otherwise, I think I've done like some PC stuff that was just for my own sake, just for fun. Um, and I've never been paid for any of that. It's always just been like, at most, I get a sample. Like I get the product for free. I get to keep it. So like, you know, um, I actually claim those on my taxes at the end of the year, which I don't think most people do that are small scale like me, but technically you're essentially being like, it's either you get cash, you know, you get paid and or you get value of a product. You're supposed to claim those on your taxes. So I have to claim those, which is annoying. Um, in my opinion, but it's, I understand. Um, oh, I got a, a gaming mouse. I got that gaming mouse too, which I liked and I used a bit, but ultimately it was a little more than I needed and some left-handed, or not left-handed, but I used my mouse left-handed. It was like a right-handed mouse. has like a joystick on the right side. It's kind of a cool mouse, honestly. Frankly, it was pretty cool, but I ended up um, not using it long-term. So... Uh, the point is now I've been reached out to by a controller, I think a peripheral company makes controllers, and I have a Nintendo Switch, and we have one Pro Controller, and then we have like the standard um, Switch controllers that come with it, of course. I would be interested in getting another Pro type controller from them if they make a Switch controller, and I'd, I'd love to test that out, because it'd actually be really nice, because I have this, the regular Pro controller, so I could compare them pretty easily. Um, it'd be an interesting video to make, because everything I do is on PC. So, but in that case, I'm not really recording gameplay anyway. I'd be recording my usage of it. So I might like set up a camera and kind of record my use, just as snippets of it. And they'd be kind of fun. Like, I think they'd be kind of a cool one. So speaking of like support for the channel, sponsorships, um, I don't know. It might be a controller company soon that I might be working with. Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of... I think it'd be really not fun for me to do a career as a YouTuber, like when I think about it. And that's why I've never really pushed this channel hard. Like, uh, you know, I hit around 20,000 subscribers a year, a year and a half ago, and it's kind of like ebbed and flowed or whatever, like kind of wobbled around 21,000 ever since. It hasn't really grown. And I'm honestly pretty fine with that. Like I, I have people that enjoy it and I enjoy making the videos. So I'm happy with what it is. Um, but I like, try to make a career out of this. It would just be like, I think it would very quickly sap the reason why I do it out of this. Like, I don't do it to make money, although the money I make is nice. Like, I'm not complaining, you know, but um, it's really just kind of like a little bit of like an artistic outlet, sort of, even though it's not like that artistic, but sort of a creative outlet in a sense. Um, and it'd be hard for me to want to, like, s sacrifice that for... Um, for a career in it, especially because I have a career that I like. Like, I would really have to, I don't know, man. The, I guess the way I see it, if I give up my career in science, in research, like working in a lab, how do I replace that? Like, it's very hard, in my opinion, to replace what I would call, like, wet bench research at home um, as a hobby. Like, it'd be very difficult to do, like, lab work as a hobby at home. But it would be <clears throat> quite easy, as it already, you can already see this, to do, you know, YouTubing or video gaming as a hobby, right? Like, there's millions of people that play video games as a hobby, and there's probably, in the U.S., thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people that stream their content on YouTube or Twitch or whatever. I'll keep an eye out for these uh, Songflower buffs. I don't see any yet. Um... My point being is that, like, it's much easier to have a hobby 
as a YouTuber, for lack of a better word, than it is to have a hobby as a scientist. So I'm... I don't know. I think I like this setup better. Full-time career as a scientist, I'd say part-time YouTuber or whatever. Um, I, I think if I ever wanted to escalate my my hobby of video gaming further in terms of like making videos, I would one either work with other people that already make videos and and you know I hone my skills a bit more as a video editor and do some editing for people, um, or more likely is switch over to Twitch and stream there, where I think it's a much bigger chance of me getting a bigger following. Uh, but I, the ease of using YouTube is nice, and I feel like YouTube is still better for viewing like videos on demand, like like pre-recorded videos. I don't think Twitch is nearly as good, or like it's not even pre-recorded. I guess on Twitch, I think it's just like recordings of live streams, and to me, it's not. It doesn't work as well on Twitch as it does on YouTube. Um, dang, no uh, songflower here either. I want to take these last two. I like that buff. It's nice. Especially if we're going to be out here doing some stuff that's a bit high level for us. It'd be really nice to have the Anixia buff still at that point, but it's going to be gone shortly. I'm kind of weaving around here a lot. Yeah, so the five... So the war is going to start at, um, early in the morning, it looks like, if the war ever finishes soon. Which is kind of nice. I might just take like that Thursday off work. All right, by the way, we found Maybez. I'll explain the war effort in a sec. Cleansing Felwood. There's a chat going on. I'm looking for group about it. I know Felwood, Felwood suffers super. I suffer along with it. Yes, this blood amber will be used to find a means of defeating the corruption present in Felwood. You've proven to me that you're willing to do whatever it takes for the Sonarian Circle. I trust you now, friend. It might seem odd that killing the elementals proved yourself to me, but at the end, but the end of saving countless sentient beings must justify the means we take. Ooh, it's a little bit philosophical. You and I can now focus on the preservation of life through the salves I can make. The time has come to cleanse Felwood. 5,700 experience. Okay, so now um, we'll get a Scenarian Beacon. What this means is if I mine, I can get Tainted Vitriol. If I get four of them, I can complete this quest. And if I hunt, if I get six of these Corrupted Soul Shards, I can complete those quests. Um, at this point, we're like... Am I missing some quests? There might be some more over here. Um, let's check for another Songflower. It's like right around the corner here. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. Oh, there we go. Dang, someone's used it recently. So it takes 25 minutes to respawn. When you see them like this, where they're the right, like they're cleansed, but you can't use them. Um, who's whispering me? And why? Uh, nah, recording a video. What's up? I don't remember who. I always forget who else are. I'm really bad. T Bindis, my buddy. Um, uh, whispers are hidden, though. FYI. I don't think it's anything. Oh, there we go. Clean Songflower. Um,. Uh, ZF, Mara. I need something for the most. Not sure of the whole range. We might be getting a group together. This is awesome. I can tank or heal. Alright, might be getting a group. Alright, where'd that. There we go, Songflower. Sweet. I love this buff so much. Um, or is that too... Uh, I'm worried Sunken Temple might be too high level. Like, uh, he's 49, this priest. Um, and I worry he might be too, a little bit too low. Too low. Um, can you... Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, 
Alright, let's go do speak to Nafine while I'm running around. Um, invite said Nibbit. I just got dazed by that guy. What a jump. What a jerk. Okay, so the Songflower gives me 5% spell crit. Or what is it? 5% all crit, and then plus 15 all attributes. There we go. I was like, why am I not killing this guy faster? My DPS now is pretty insane with Wind Fury up and everything. Um, anyone for Zol Rock? Got me and Team Bindus so far. Okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna try and get a group together, maybe for Zol for Rock, which would be nice, because I do have a couple quests. Yeah, a couple quests. Ooh, do I want to try and go back and get Rend? I don't know. I'm thinking, like, if we're gonna do this, um, looking for a 3 DPS, so. I should be able to tank this instance. I think I'll be okay tanking it. I'm trying to get uh, DPS for Zulfrock. I'm not going to go back to get the Rend buff right now. I don't think it's worth it. I don't even know if it'll drop. I don't feel like sitting around waiting for it, you know? But I am checking in, looking for groups, see if we can find some DPS for Zulfrock. Um, also accepting level 60s that want to help. I think, um, I'm unsure. Wasn't on when it got done. Someone's asking which uh, item got turned in last for the horde, and I don't know. It was possibly wool. Um, I've been tracking it a lot, but yeah. Who is this? Is this? Oh, nice. Okay. Um. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've got a Shadow Priest. Nice. Okay. Uh, looking for two more. We're looking for four. <laughs> Here we go. Four. Two more. Self Rock DPS. We've got a pretty good group, I think. Um, we should really carry some people that are a bit lower than us because we're a little beefy. Um, I'm like pretty. I think I'm pretty well geared. And 52 is a little high even for it uh honestly we're not going to do it this episode unfortunately so i apologize in advance but you you are now witness to the formation of a group for the rest of this episode while i kind of mosey on over to nafian is that his name up north i'm just kind of um trying to pick up any whipper root tubers i can find along the way oh, what, uh, uh, is there anything here no I don't see it. Um, I think it's fine. Someone whispered and said, I'm a 44 Feral Druid. I think that's okay. A little low, but not terrible. And I honestly like that we're going to get some Mark of the Wild buffs is is a bonus. And um, on top of the Mark of the Wild buff, we'll get a Thorns buff. Welcome. I need one more. Need one more DPS. Sulfurok. Last spot. Um, any class would be fine at this point. Ideally, some sort of AOE, but I think we'll be okay. Like, I'm not losing sleep over this group. I don't think there's a lot of AOE needs in Zulfurok. There's the little area with, like, the scarab shells. It's a little bit annoying, but it's not terrible. Um, what we'll do is, once I get the last person, I'm going to finish turning my Nafian quest, and then I'm going to hearth to Orgrimmar, and then I'll fly down to Gadgetzan. There might be a quest or two to pick up in Gadgets in, so I'll pick those up if I can. I'm checking for these Night Dragon's Breaths. These are another thing I want to look for here. 
Um, I don't see them anymore. But we are gonna aggro. Who's this? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's sad. Uh, someone mined up a bunch of stuff. Uh, ooh, um, I don't wanna- oh, okay. I dodged all that. Ooh, I was about to get stuck. Um, okay. Welcome all. I'm trying to get up here. Cause I'm really trying to get to my, uh, my quest journey before we get out of here. I would like to turn that quest, just cause I don't know if I'll come back to Thalwood right away. Please head over to Zulfurok. Um, oh, is it cleansed? Um, I do want this, for sure. I'm gonna kill this mob real fast. I'll take Cleanse Wind Blossom berries. Uh, if I can get them. They're not amazing. Like I've said last episode, or two episodes back, I think we farmed some up. We, we saw some, but they're like free and they're 10 stamina, so. Why not? Awesome, nine more wind blossoms. I'll take those. Those are great. Um, I haven't tanked in a while, so I'm not sure how well I'm going to do in here, but we'll see, you know. Um, next episode, we'll see. Uh, oh, is this a mithril deposit? I'm going to be lazy. I'm kind of um, going to hurry up with this best I can. I don't want to, like, it's going to take me a little bit to get down there anyway. I don't want to delay them. We do have a warlock, I guess, right? that could summon us if we, if we get a few people down there, but I hate being the person that's like, oh, I'm going to wait for the warlock to summon me. You know, I I try to make a good faith effort to get there. If I don't get there before the people I get summoned, it's great, but um, I try not to purposely stall. going to hearth board in one min, then fly down. Um, I have those two quests, I'll try to share them. I think the only quest we've done here was the carrot quest, so I'm pretty excited about getting a few more done. And these are actually quests, I think at least one of these leads into Sunken Temple, which is why I kind of wanted to try and do this before we go to Sunken Temple, so I think that's pretty nice. This could be pretty nice if we get it done. Alright, here's Nafian. He'll give us a follow-up that I'm... Speak to Nafian. Okay. Deadwood of the North. Um, I'll grab this for now. I kind of want to see if this songflower down here is up. It's like nearby. It is cleansed. How, how far does it get to that one? I might go grab it. Those are pretty high-level mobs, aren't they? But I think I can go ninja this in a moment. Interrupt that spell cast, because he's the curse is really annoying. It like drops your um This guy's actually doing a lot of damage to me. The curse drops your healing by 50% in terms of you being able to heal yourself, so I really don't want to have that on me. I might die to this guy, frankly. That actually was a lot more annoying than I expected. Can I loot that without aggroing this mob? I don't know if I can. I think I'm just gonna bail on this. I was gonna try and get it, but honestly, I really don't wanna have to fight both these. If I fight them both, I'll probably die. I'd rather just cut my losses. Even if I don't have this buff for very long in the instance, it's fine. It's probably better than what's gonna happen to me from fighting that guy. All right, let's uh, kill Gammon. Sorry, Gammon. And then I need to probably stack up on some... We don't have a mage, so I'm going to buy some, like... Some of this higher level water. And some of the higher level food. I want to vendor off... The rest of this stuff. Oh, I didn't open my herb casing yet. I'll do that in a moment. Let's do this. Mage world. Yeah, okay. Maybe not the most useful thing. I'm just going to straight up vendor that. 
And go. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to go fly from here. I think this is going to be the end of this episode. Uh, we'll start up next time. Hopefully, uh, in Zolfrock. Not exactly sure. Somewhere along there. And uh, we'll go from there. I've got onks. I've got bandages. I've got food. I think we're in pretty good shape. I don't think there's anything else I need to stop and pick up, but I've got all my tanking stuff too, so... In fact, let's, um... Do this. Alright. Okay, well... Uh, that is all for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in Zolfarak next time.